Chris, what is our third main topic today? This comes from Frank Franklin G. It's unreal that we're just over a month away from Obi-Wan. Can't believe it. And I couldn't be more excited. One of the coolest things we saw in the trailer, to me, was Reva, the third sister of the Inquisitors. I just read that she was actually a Jedi in training and that the Jedi had originally taken her from her family before the fall of Order 66 and that she features more prominently than just a henchman in the series. What do you think about these reports? All right, thanks a lot for saying that in, Franklin. And yeah, it is kind of crazy. Look, obviously and understandably, we've been focused a lot on Halo. We've been focused a lot on Moon Knight, obviously. We've been focused a lot on Doctor Strange 2 coming, and we've been focused a lot on Thor Love and Thunder. But he's right. Franklin is right. We are now just about six weeks away from Obi-Wan coming, which is damn exciting. And look, when that trailer dropped, obviously one of the really cool figures, obviously we have the Grand Inquisitor, which is like, I cannot wait to see more of the Grand Inquisitor. Dude. That's going to be great. But obviously one of the more intriguing characters that we saw in the trailer was the third sister, known as Reva. And I will admit that I thought the, the real true villain of it is going to be the Grand Inquisitor, and that probably will kind of be the man behind the curtain sort of thing. But I was kind of going on the assumption that Third Sister was just going to be the, well, to be honest, the Darth Maul of The Force Awakens. Just kind of mean, evil, tough monster. Henchman shows up, battle, 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 nothing much more. But apparently, according to a new report coming out and new rumors going around, it's going to be actually more than that. And a little bit of her backstory seems to be have been revealed that gives a little bit of a sense of tragedy to it as well. This comes just from the folks at CBR who wrote the following. According to MakingStarWars.net, uh, Moses Ingram's Inquisitor Reva, also known as the Third Sister, will be more than just a brutal antagonist. The insider notes that there is both humanity and rage behind her motivations, which will factor into Obi-Wan Kenobi's endgame. Reva is reportedly not an inconsequential villain, and her arc will have ramifications on the story. Mm. The show will seemingly explore elements of her tragic past, revealing how she was taken from her family and trained as a warrior for the Jedi. Following the events of Order 66, Reva is then presented with an option to die or work for the Empire as a part of his Inquisitorius, or become an Inquisitor. This is really interesting on a couple of levels. One is something that I'm not really happy with. Hmm. There has been a movement, if you will, within Star Wars creators over the past couple of years that I've noticed that, and maybe even starting a little bit with the prequels, that, uh, yeah, you know, the Jedis are actually assholes. There, there's been a kind of an embracing of this idea. Well, it's like, well, you know, the... If you really look at it, the Sith weren't all that bad. And if you know, <laughs> the Jedi weren't really all that good. Mm -hmm. And I got to say, I'm not, as, as, a, as a traditional OG Star Wars guy, I'm not super comfortable with the direction that seems to be going in. That said, I admit that there is some pretty cool narrative storytelling you can do with something like that. So, for instance, if we are talking about Reva, the third sister, having been taken... Not accepted into the Jedi Academy. Not accepted to come and train, but rather, like, taken from her family. Maybe against her will. Maybe against her family's will. I mean, Star Wars has always been a little bit nebulous about on, okay, once a Je the Jedi identifies somebody, like, does the family still get a choice? Or do the Jedi just get to go, yoink, they're our kid now which I really hope that's not what they're getting into because, again, I, I, I don't like the idea of painting the Jedi and the Jedi Order as just giant assholes. But that being said, it creates some interesting story where you now have this character who is steeped in bitterness. And the most interesting villain motivations to me are villain motivations that are based in legitimate wrongdoing, that they suffered a wrong at somebody's hands and that kind of turned them into what they then become. That's an interesting thing to me. So there could be some pretty rich storytelling here for this. Again, I'm already pretty stoked for this show. I find myself getting more and more excited as we go, uh, more excited than I thought I would be when they initially announced the show. So I'm on board with this. Hey, guys, we want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of today's video, 
Peloton. Now, listen, in the never ending quest to try to stay in shape, one of the keys is to vary up your workout and your exercises to make sure you avoid losing your motivation and keep from getting burnt out from doing the same thing over and over again. Peloton has you covered. I know for me, one of the keys was getting my Peloton tread and using the Peloton app to get my varied workouts in. And Peloton just keeps pushing you forward with new classes, new music, new ways to keep your workouts fun and motivating. One of the newer offerings that has me personally personally really excited is their boxing classes. Peloton is stepping into the ring with its newest discipline and you don't even have to have any gloves. Discover a fast, furious and fun workout with Peloton instructors in your corner. Even if you've never boxed before, these classes will have you working up a sweat while working on the fundamentals of form, footwork and fun combos that will keep you on your toes. Peloton has a workout for every day and every kind of schedule. So guys, right now, visit OnePeloton.com to learn more. That's O-N-E-P-E-L-O-T-O-N.com. Chris, you hear this background that Third Sister could play an important role in it story-wise. You hear about the background rumors coming in now, things about her. What do you make of all this and how does it hit you? Oh, I love this because I love when the Jedis are a little bit dickish <laughs> because it, it goes back to just uh, looking at institutions. Institutions cannot be flawless. Pe they are run by people. Right. Jedi are still people at the end of the day. Whether they're different, various aliens, they're all still people with their own agendas, right? And so I love like in Fallen Order, that teaser we got released, right? Of, hey, we didn't just say you could be a Jedi. We also abandoned your brother and screwed up like your family life and everything. <laughs> like I find that very, very compelling. I also like a villain who's not just a mustache twirling villain. I like when there's a rhyme or reason and you have a very, very staunch belief in your cause because no one is ever the villain of their own story. We're all villains in somebody else's. So to have that kind of backstory where we'll care about this character and understand where they're coming from, I think is a really smart move and I'm real jazzed <laughs> if it's true. Rob, you're hearing this kind of backstory tour. By the way, where's your anticipation level just in general? Because we've been distracted with a lot of other cool stuff oh. going on. Where's your thoughts on Obi-Wan right now? What do you think about this story? Uh, I, I can't wait for this, John. I am, I'm very excited for this show. But I think what's really interesting is, what if you had a Jedi trained from birth or taken from her family? When the Empire rose, she just decided, I like the Empire. I believe where Palpatine is taking us and decides to go over there for whatever reason, taken from her family, because mm -hmm. we've never really seen it. it, it Star Wars is a, a traditional fairy tale, black and white, very much, you know, it's like, these are the good guys. These are the bad guys. If you have a British accent, for the most part, you're evil. You're an evil person. <laughs> By the way, when they moved away from that in Jedi, that was a, that was a mistake. But uh, I think that, that it would be really interesting to have one of these three sisters characters decide that I embrace the Empire. I believe the, in the order they're bringing to the universe because the Jedi have not. We have seen that before in Inquisitors, in, in, in mm -hmm. other stories, yes. in, in other stories, both in Rebels and in uh, Fallen Order. And I've always, kind of I've always liked that idea. Yeah. And I think that, that because you can't, obviously the Empire worked because some people embraced it. So why not? Why not have a Jedi decide no? I'm going to be a, I'm going to go work for Palpatine. I really believe in this stuff that Palpy is yeah, spinning. Yeah, Papa Palpatine, he's the one to go with. Love him. I mean, you know, he <laughs> mechanized, industrialized. He he brought a lot. He gave people something to believe in again. Not some crazy religion. Boom. <laughs> Although he is a Sith Lord, but uh, it's all right. Yeah, but you nobody know. knows yeah, that. Nobody doesn't, doesn't know that. that. Doesn't doesn't know that. Ancient religions are Listen, no, no match for a good blaster at your cults, side, kid. Okay. Ancient religion and fairy tales. Yeah. So anyway, guys, question is for you. What do you think about this story? I kind of like it. It seems to be fleshing out her character. I mean, I think practically speaking, she's probably going to be the main antagonist of the show, even though it's going to be somebody behind the curtain. So let's see where that goes. Question is for you guys. What do you think about this? Jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts.